Hi friends, I would like to welcome you to this episode of Dams Unplugged. In this episode, we'll going, we, are, we always talk about an uh, integrated approach to medicine. Today, I'll talk about a very important vessel which we use while doing a Doppler in the fetus. And we will try to explore why it, this vessel is clinically important. And that is the idea behind Unplugged is to give you the integrated picture of the basic sciences and the clinical sciences. Let me try to show you the vessel. And the, what I'm going to talk to you about will be the value of looking at ductus venosus during the Doppler study. So I hope you all know what is ductus venosus. Ductus venosus is this trumpet shaped vessel connecting the umbilical vein to the inferior vena cava. And the blood from the left umbilical branch gets shunted via the ductus venosus into the IVC. And while doing Doppler, the sagittal anterior insonation is going to give you the best visualization of ductus venosus. I will show you how it looks like. So this is how the sagittal uh, image of the fetal abdominal will look like and this is how you will see the ductus venosus. When while doing a Doppler, this is how the imaging would look like. So when we see the Doppler, this is how the live imaging would look like. You can see the ductus venosus here. And when we put on the pulse Doppler here, we are trying to see the waveform. We, you know, the waveform will reveal itself to you. This is how the waveform will look like. And you can see this is having a characteristic triphasic kind of pattern that you see here. It is triphasic, but it is always above the baseline. It is not going below the baseline in the image. So this is what we saw in the image. We saw a characteristic triphasic pattern in the ductus venosus. We could see three peaks. One slightly larger peak, one below it, one below it, but not touching the baseline ever. So the first wave that we are looking at is called as the S wave. S wave corresponds to the ventricular systolic contraction and is the highest peak. And second is the D wave. That is because of the early fetal ventricular diastole and that is the second highest peak. Well, the most important for us is the A wave, which is because of the fetal atrial contraction. Although it is forming the lowest part, but it doesn't, you know, touch the baseline or doesn't go below the baseline. Let me show you an example of what we expect to see in abnormal. Please uh, look at the picture again. This is the same S wave, D wave, but we look at this. You see the reversal of A wave. Reversal of A wave when we see in ductus venosus doppler is considered abnormal. And this abnormality would vary between the early trimester and the late trimester. And I'll invite now Dr. Deepthi to talk about the pathophysiology and the clinical relevance of this finding in while doing Doppler in pregnancy. Hello, everyone. Um, so uh, Dr. Sumer just showed us the uh, reversal of uh, flow in the ductus venosus. Typically, we're talking about the reversal of the A wave of ductus venosus. And as he mentioned, this is an abnormal finding and it has got great clinical implication. Right now, let us see why do we see this reversal of A wave in the ductus venosus. Now, as we've mentioned in the normal flow that it is always a forward flow. Right, and we would start seeing the changes when the forward circulation becomes abnormal, right? And it begins with increased resistance in the umbilical artery, yeah? That's the forward flow for the heart. And this increased resistance in the umbilical artery would lead to impaired cardiac performance, right? So fetal cardiac performance is impaired, which in turn, you know, would lead to a rise in the central venous pressure, right? And as a result of which, what would happen is the diastolic flow in the ductus venosus will reduce. Now, in order to sort of compensate, there is a vasodilatation in the ductus venosus, but what happens because of this vasodilatation is that there is going to be retrograde transmission of the atrial pressure now to the ductus venosus. And this leads to increase in the resistive index and the resistive index increases and this leads to loss of A wave, right? And so which means if you understand this pathophysiology, the reversal in the A wave is happening way later than the changes what we pick up in the umbilical artery. So the changes happen in the ductus venosus approximately two weeks after the changes in the umbilical artery, right? And
And if you understand this, a reversal in the A wave of the ductus venosus would mean that the oxygenation or the blood supply to the myocardium or the heart per se is going to be impaired. And therefore, we say that this reversal is an indicative of, you know, um, impending fetal death. So it is an ominous finding. And, um, you know, the venous Doppler reversal would be the last thing that we would see in um, impairing death right now once we know that the reversal of a wave is an abnormal finding you know it has significance in the first trimester or early part of the pregnancy and it has significance in the later part of the pregnancy right so in the first trimester the reversal of the a wave is usually associated with you know chromosomal abnormalities but mind you it could be a normal finding in even up to 80 percent of uh, pregnant women. So when does it become significant? It becomes significant when you are seeing the reversal of A wave with increased nuchal translucency. So when the nuchal translucency is increased and you are seeing a reversal in the A wave, it would mean uh, most likely presence of chromosomal abnormalities. Typical association, our highest association is with Downs, trisomy 21, followed by trisomy 18, followed by trisomy 13, right? And um, similarly, the reversal in the off the A wave is also associated with cardiac defect the fetus and this would be an indication to go ahead and look out for fetal echo and look out cardiac defects in the baby right so this is the significance in the first trimester of ductus venosus uh, reversal in the a wave now let's let's see what is the clinical significance of seeing this in the later part of the pregnancy as we all know we study doppler in in the later part of pregnancy usually in cases of utero placental insufficiency like IUGR, right? And we're using it for fetal monitoring. Now, most commonly started vessels are umbilical arteries followed by the middle cerebral artery. And the reason being that the umbilical arteries would pick up the changes or would be the first vessel to show us the changes of uteroplacental insufficiency, right? And, you know, once we see a reversal in the umbilical artery, uh, you know, usually we, we recommend uh, termination of pregnancy. But let's suppose these days, you know, uh, the fetal medicine units and, uh, you know, want to somehow maybe in some cases stretch the pregnancy. So when would we want to really do a venous Doppler? So this would be when the pregnancy is beyond the period of viability, which for us in India is beyond 28 weeks, right? And, you know, uh, we do want to try and stretch the pregnancy to 32 weeks or so, right? And in this meantime, if there is a reversal in the umbilical artery, what do we monitor the baby with? So at this time, when the umbilical artery is already showing us the reversal, but we still want to stretch the pregnancy, then is where we use venous Doppler, right? So we would be monitoring the venous Doppler, looking out for these changes, provided, you know, we would be doing a daily NST and a biophysical profile for the baby. And, you know, provided those findings turn out to be normal, we would want to stretch the pregnancy to 32 weeks. Right. And during this time, apart from an intensive daily fetal monitoring with NSTs and biophysical profile, uh, naturally, we would give a steroid cover and prop, most likely magnesium sulfate for neuroprotection of the baby. And once we achieve this and we're able to stretch the pregnancy to 32 weeks to ensure a good survival of the baby. So that is where we, you know, are, are now increasingly using venous Doppler in management of IUGR cases or UPI cases for fetal monitoring. Right. And, um, you know, uh, we all know what happens to ductus venosus post delivery. It's going to degenerate. Yes. So uh, functionally as well as anatomically and it degenerates and converts into ligamentum venosum. Right. Rarely. Yes. What could happen postnatally as well is that the ductus venosus may not close down. Right. And if it remains patent, it can again cause problems ranging from you know, galactosemias to hypoxia to, um, you know, uh, hepatic encephalopathy uh, due to hyperammonemia. So this is, you know, what could happen if the ductus venosus is patent uh, postnatally as well. So this is, uh, you know, what we wanted to tell you today about the significance of uh, studying the ductus venosus flow forms on Doppler in early pregnancy and in late pregnancy, how to identify them and how to use them or where to use them clinically, right? I hope uh, you enjoyed the session with us and 
and um, it turns out to be useful for clinical application. And if you would want us to make more such uh, videos for you, please follow us on Dams Delhi YouTube channel and on Facebook. And do send in your recommendations for, you know, maybe some new things that you would want to see uh, clinical videos on. Right? Thank you so much and hope you enjoyed the session.